Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk and this session is specifically for the website beginners and I have a discussion with uh, multiple engineers, specifically the beginners, okay. And the, the, the first question that I heard is that uh, when we start to learn WebSphere, okay, so we are not sure uh, uh, from where we can start, what exactly we learn first, okay, and what is the basic uh, architecture of WebSphere. Okay, for example, suppose that uh, uh, we would like to have a, a, a setup or configuration in our local PC or laptop or machine. Okay, then uh, what are the few basic things that we have to do when we go for the local lab setup? So similarly, there are a lot of different kind of a questions, okay, specifically for beginners. So I thought to create this, uh, uh, this session, okay. So in this session, in, in just a single slide, I will explain you the some basic concepts, okay. Uh, that as a beginner, when you are going to learn the web sphere or going to set up the web sphere on your local PC or a machine, then how you can begin. Okay, and along with that, few the important concepts. Okay, so now if you talk about the uh, web sphere application server, first thing when we suppose we are going to set up a local lab, okay, we are going to configure it on our local PC. Okay, so how to install the software, how to download the software, I have posted some more other uh, videos you can uh, search in the channel. Okay, how you can directly download the software directly on your PC. Okay, uh, by using the installation manager. Okay, uh, with the help of uh, command line. Okay, and then how you can install that. So the very first thing, okay, maybe you suppose that you have a machine. Okay, uh, I'm assuming that I have a machine with the IP address of 192.168.4.3. Okay, so the this machine also referred as node. When we specifically talk about the web sphere, Okay, so this machine or the server where your web server is going to be run, it is referred as node. Okay, and with respect to node, that means with respect to each and every machine or server, you will have the corresponding node agent. Okay, you may have the node agent or you may not. It is completely based on the kind of a, a features or the setup that you are going to configure for your web sphere. Okay, so now I will tell you in some time what exactly is the node agent and what is the purpose of node agent. So as of now, what you can understand, you have a physical machine, which also called as a node in WebSphere. Okay, and then with respect to each and every node, you will have the corresponding node, node agent, which is a service of the IBM WebSphere. What is the purpose of that? I will explain you. Now, the first thing when, when you have a machine and then you are going for a local setup, the first thing you have to do is you have to install the WebSphere. Okay, and for that, as I said, you can scan the my channel. Okay, Digitalk channel, and then you will see the uh, video how to install uh, the web sphere with the help of installation manager. Okay, it's a very straightforward process. You have to create an account on the IBM website. Okay, with the uh, use of that username and password, you can directly download the software on your machine with the help of installation manager. Okay, for that you have two options: either you can initiate the graphical interface, and then you can add the repository links. Okay, and after that you can initiate the installation. Otherwise, if you would like to install using the command line, then this installation manager come with the command line tool as well. And you can use that as well for the installation. Okay. So now, suppose this is a machine. Okay. And I have installed the web sphere in the location slash user to slash middleware slash app server. So this is the location that I have selected for the installation. Okay. Now, again, this location is a custom. That, that, mean, that means when you are going for the installation, then you have an option. Either you can go with the default installation location or you can choose a separate location for the installation and that depend on the kind of a profile that you are going to create and what are the options that you have selected when you are creating a profile. So now let me tell you what exactly is a profile. Okay, so after the installation of the web sphere, the very first thing that you have to do is you have to create a profile. Okay, and now this profile is corresponding uh, created with the help of PMT tool. Okay, so that means this PMT tool comes with the installation of the web sphere. Okay, there is a specific directory where you have this particular script. You can initiate this script and this will start a wizard for creation of the profile. Right. So this is the location, default location and the script. So in my case, I have installed the web sphere in slash user to slash middleware slash app server. Inside that you will get a folder called bin. And inside that you will get a folder profile management. And inside this folder, you will see a script called pmt.sh in Linux or Unix-based systems. And for Windows, you will have a .bat. Okay, so you have to start this script and then this will initiate the profile creation tool. So now, as of today, in 2024 or by the end of 2024, 
uh, uh, you will have a, a different kind of a profiles in your web sphere. As you can see on the screen, once you will initiate the wizard, the first option we will see the cell and then deployment manager and a federated application server management, application server, custom profile, secure proxy configuration only. So these are the different kind of a profile that you can create with the help of web sphere. Okay, so now I will explain you what is the purpose of each and every profile. It's very simple and very straightforward. Don't need to confuse on that. Okay, so now when you are going to create profile, so whatever the profile that you are going to be created, okay, for that you will get the two options. The first one is the typical profile creation and second is the advanced profile creation. It is very clear from the name as well. Typical will, will go with the default options for each and every configurations. And when you will go with the advanced profile option, then it will prompt you for the different input for the different kind of a parameters. Okay, so for example, uh, the installation location, which is called the profile location. So because we are creating a profile, so we have to specify the location. So if you are going to select the typical profile, then it will automatically select the location for you. Okay, and similarly, apart from that, when we are creating a profile, we have to give a name for the profile. Okay, and then uh, it will create a node, as I said, for each and every uh, physical machine, which is referred as a node, we have a corresponding node agent. Okay, so this node agent is defined inside the node. Okay, so that means we have to create a node and we have to give a name for that. So when we create a node specifically, uh, it automatically pick up based on the your uh, system name. Okay, or if you're in the Windows or maybe you know your Linux systems, it will take automatically to the IP or DNS of your machine. Then you have to give the host. Then there is a corresponding cell. Okay, and then there are a lot of different kind of a custom ports are there, which is used by the web sphere. Okay, so these are the different options that you will uh, be, get selected automatically for you when you are going to select the typical profile creation option. Okay, and if you go with the advanced option, then it will give you the flexibility. You can provide your own parameters. Like you, can, you would like to use a different location, profile location. You have a custom name for your profile, node, host, cell. Maybe you want to use a different kind of a ports. Okay, so then you can use the advanced options. Okay. So these are two options that you will see when you are going to create any profile. So now let us talk about the profile. So first is the cell profile. Okay. So in cell profile, it will automatically create a deployment manager and a federated application server. So what happens is that in a highly available environment, okay, specifically in the production, you will have a multiple application servers. And all these application servers may not be in the single machine. It is scattered around the multiple physical servers. Okay, which is in the cluster. So cluster is a group of multiple application servers. So now when we have a multiple application servers, which is scattered around the different physical servers, okay, then we need a certain mechanism for the centralized administration of all of the application servers, right? For example, if you are uh, doing a certain kind of a configurations, then you should need a mechanism so that you can do it once and it will get reflected in all, in all application servers. Right. For example, if you are doing a deployment, then you can do the deployment from a single place and then the deployment get reflected to each and every application server, which is running on the different physical machines. Right. So for that, you will have a deployment manager. That means it is act as a centralized controller, which is used to control your complete domain of your web sphere. That means here all of the application servers and the corresponding configurations. Right. So DMGR is used to control all of your application server, which is there in the cluster scattered around the multiple physical server. So now if you are going to create a cell profile, so it will give you or it will create a deployment manager. That means it will give you a web interface, okay, which you can access with the help of browser. And from there, you can do a multiple kind of a configurations, data changes on each and every physical application servers, okay, which is running on different physical servers. Right. So if you are going to select the cell profile, what it will do, it will create one deployment manager for you. Along with that, it will create the one application server. And federated means it will automatically get attached to your deployment manager. Right. Because your deployment manager is going to control your application servers. So there has to be a link between your deployment manager and each and every application server. So this link is called a federation when your application server get attached with the deployment manager and so that your deployment manager now can control your application servers. Okay. So with this cell profile, it will create two profiles, one for the deployment manager and second for your federated application server. And once you will log into your deployment manager console, you can see this particular application server. You can start stop this application server. You can do the deployment of application on this particular application server. You can create the data sources, which you can target to this particular application server. Okay. That means by default, it is going to create an application server along with the deployment manager profile. 
right so now if you go for the management profile so your deployment manager is a management profile right because it is doing the management of your all of the clustered application servers so when we talk about the management profile so we have two kind of profile one is the deployment manager profile and second is the administration profile okay which is also called the admin agent profile okay so now in the cell when we selected the first option it automatically created a deployment manager along with the application server now suppose that you would like to create a single deployment manager on a particular node and then you would like to create the multiple application servers later time so what you can do you can create a single deployment manager profile as well right so for that you can go with the management profile and then select the deployment manager profile option to create only the deployment manager profile right and apart from that you will have one more option as i said which is called the admin agent profile okay which is called the admin agent management profile and what is the difference between deployment manager profile and the admin agent profile is because both are the management profiles right so admin agent profile is used to control the independent application servers which is running on a single machine okay so now as i said deployment manager is used to control the application server which is scattered around the multiple physical servers but when we talk about the admin agent so this is only take care of the servers which is running on a single machine and all are the independent application servers okay so this specifically used in the non production environment for example if you have a, a machine where you have a development profile is running you have a testing profile is running you have a quality profile is running and you would like to uh, uh, administrator all of this profile from a single web console so you can use the admin agent in that case okay so you will get a two profile management profile one is the deployment manager and second is the admin agent third is the application server profile so if you would like to create a single application server profile independent application server that means this is not going to be managed with the help of any of your deployment manager or maybe not with the admin agent so you can create a single admin server profile and there you will get a application server which you can use for the uh, deployment and testing of your applications which is specifically used in the development or some non production environment and later time if you would like to uh, enroll or you can say you would like to federate this application server with the management profile either with the dmgr or either with the admin agent then you can do it later as well okay so once you will federate this application server with the management profile then you can manage it with the help of that particular profile for example dmgr or admin agent apart from that you will have a custom profile so custom profile is is a kind of an empty node or you can an empty profile okay so it does not contain an admin console or servers this typically used for custom profile okay is used to federate its node to deployment manager after federating the node use the deployment manager to create a server or a cluster of servers within the node so for example if you would like to have a cluster with multiple application servers okay and so in that case what we can do we can create a custom profile this is a blank profile so after creating a custom profile it only create a node for you okay that is called associated node agent okay and that node agent will get federated to your dmgr so now this is an empty profile that means there is no application server associated there so after creating the custom profile you can create your own application servers you can create your own cluster and then you can assign your application server to the cluster okay so this is a custom profile right and apart from that last one is the secure proxy so this secure proxy is just like the web server what we why we use a web server is for the redirection of the request from your web server to the application server right for some security purpose along with that sometime we deploy our some static content on the application web server as well so in web space secure proxy is similar to the web server which is used for the redirection of the of the content okay to your application server that means you can configure this secure proxy in front of your application servers and can redirect the request to your application servers so this is just work like web web server okay but there is a difference between web server and the secure proxy uh, in terms of the configurations and i would say secure proxy it bit complex in terms of the configurations and i haven't see this is configured in any environment so far for any of the client okay so these are the different kind of profiles right so now the profile location if you are creating a profile so profile will be get created inside the profiles folder of your installation folder so user2 middleware app server is the uh, installation location in my case so once you will create a profile it will create a folder with the name of profiles inside this particular location installation location and then whatever the name that you will give during the creation of the profile it will automatically create a folder with that name 
inside this profiles folders. Okay, so now we have a different kind of a profile, cell management, application server, custom profile, secure profile. So for each and every profile, we have a custom template, which is used by the WebSphere when it creates the different kind of a profile. Okay, so and the location of all these default template is installation location and then profile templates folder. So now we have a DMGR, that means we have a DMGR profile. Along with that, we will have application server profiles. We can create multiple application server profiles based on our requirement. Right. And then, as I said, in the custom profile, you can create a cluster and then inside the clusters, you can create the multiple application servers. And now once we have a different application server, then what we do, we can do the deployment. And then before that, we have to start stop the servers. So to, to start stop the servers, you will get uh, different scripts. And the location of the script will be installation location and the profile name, the profile, whatever the profile name that you will give during the installation or the, the creation of profile. Okay, and uh, and then inside that it will create a folder with the name of bin and all the scripts will be there inside the bin folder which you can use to start stop your application servers, DMGR and the node, node agents, right. So once your application servers are up and running, what we do, we do deployment of the applications on our application servers, okay, whether it is independent or whether it is any clusters, right. And then your application may need a connectivity with the database. For the data and for that what we do we define the different data sources so that, so that our applications can connect to the database and if you have application integration with the third party systems maybe with some cloud applications with some other on-premise application with other third party providers maybe with the erp and some other uh, service providers for that integrations we may use the jms messaging features of the WebSphere for the exchanging of the messages right and now when we talk about the node agent, what is the use of node agent? This is what we discussed initially, right? So as I said, uh, in, in the DMGR kind of a configuration, we have a single administration console, which is a centralized point of the configuration of different application servers, which is scattered around the different physical servers, right? So in that case, your DMGR connect with the application server with the help of node agent, right? So that means on each and every server, or a physical machine, you will have a node agent should be up and running, okay? And your DMGR, when going to do any kind of a configuration across all of the application servers, it will going to use the node agent to connect with the app server. For example, if you are doing the uh, deployment of application, and for deployment, you have selected the application server one and application server two from the console, right? So your DMGR will first connect with the node agent, which is running on each and every machine where you have app server one and app server two is running. And then it will do the deployment. If your node agent is down on any of the physical machine, then it will not able to reach to the application server, which is running on that particular particular physical server, and it will give you the error, right? So this node agent is just a link between your DMGR and your app server for the connectivity, okay, for the synchronization of the changes, right? So this is in a nutshell how we. Uh, 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 what we do exactly with the WebSphere initially as a beginner when we go for the, uh, for the installation and setup, what are the different important concepts, right? So first we have seen the installation directory location. In my case, it is user 2 but it will be app server. Profile location will be inside your installation location. You will see a profile, a folder get created with the name of profiles. And inside this profile folder, you will have another folder with the name of profile that you are going to create. So from single location or you can say from single installation, we can, we can create a different kind of a profiles. Okay, for example, you have installed the WebSphere, then you can create a cell profile where you have a deployment manager and federated application server, then you can create management profile, then you can create multiple application server profiles. Okay, so you can create the multiple profiles from a single installation as well. Right, so for each and every profile, it will create a folder uh, with the name of profile inside the profiles folder. So profile template location we have discussed, but exactly it is. Now a start stop location we also we have discussed, you will have a folder called bin inside your profile. Okay, where you will get the scripts for the start stop. For the configuration of your profile, you will have a folder called config inside your profile name, where you, have, you will see a lot of XML and some other files, which will contain the configuration of your uh, profile. And then you will have a logs folder inside your profile name. And inside the logs folder, you will have a separate folder for each and every application server. Okay, and inside that, you will see the corresponding log file of each and every application server. Right. So this is how you can from where you can start learning your IBM WebSphere as a beginner. Thank you.